Uh, Richard Denver, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. Uh, Richard is the Digital Data Delivery Manager with the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, that is a, certainly a position that would keep you at the forefront of some of the social media initiatives that the Bureau is putting out. Tell us about what you've been working on and, and some of the key, uh, the key initiatives. Yeah, look, some of the key initiatives have been really around engaging uh, the audience uh, via Facebook and other platforms, social platforms that we have um, or we engage in. Some of the challenges, of course, are that um, we want to do more in this space. Uh, we want to take advantage of what the community are after. But the areas that we have done really well are the likes of getting involved in doing photo competitions, uh, informing them of the types of products and services that we do offer. One of the challenges with our website, of course, is it's so vast and at times people can't find information that's relevant on a daily basis. So what we find is that highlighting products and services that we offer via Facebook tends to drive a lot of interest and drives people to information they didn't even know that we provide on a daily basis. So there are two aspects that have done quite well. Uh, I guess the other part is really being a part of that community and feeling as though that you're offering something that's of value to them. So we're always looking at new ways that we can get them engaged and we can find new things that are interesting to them. So yeah. And why Facebook? What is it about that medium that's particularly uh, appealing and relevant for you? Yeah, look, I think it was uh, the fact that we started off with a trial. We wanted to look at a way to get involved in social media uh, initially a few years back. And Facebook seemed to be the platform of choice. Perhaps because the expectation in the community was less around an immediate response and they're a bit more forgiving and allowed you, you know, a few hours to respond to any inquiries that you put up there. And on weekends they're not expecting you to always be answering all the questions. So they're, you know, in some cases they're happy to wait till Mon uh, Monday mornings. So we wanted to look for a platform that was a bit more forgiving, there was a big community base, uh, there was interest in what it is that we might um, might potentially offer in that space. So that's why Facebook became probably the priority for us initially. Uh, we've now moved on, uh, whilst we still offer Facebook and we're still putting a lot of effort into it, now looking into the video channels, so the likes of YouTube is an area that we're going to be spending a lot of time in in the next couple of years promoting some of the services we offer. Uh, in particular, uh, we're looking at uh, mobile website being launched shortly, so we'll be using YouTube to promote um, products like that. Are there any risks that particular types of channels may not work as well? For example, video would be something that, that may may not be engaging for people. How do you judge that and how do you decide how to, to uh, allocate your priorities uh, based on the different channels and the different forms of media? Yeah, look, all of it's about learning and you can't always expect that you're going to go into the space and get it right the first time. So a lot of it's to do with learning. Sometimes you'll have to take risks and try something. If it doesn't work, then you learn from that. You don't invest in it again. Or you try and find a better way to do it the second time. You know, look, sometimes videos do work and other times they don't. It just really comes down to the type of content that you're offering and what are the platforms you're distributing that information on. So, for example, we do do some videos which are very popular, uh, get a lot of interest, uh, and that's simply because we've promoted them well via our Facebook um, platform. We've, we've promoted them well via our Google Plus account as well. So, look, it really depends. Sometimes things work and other times you've just got to accept that they're not going to work. Yeah. You have a very short... Um time frame in order to find out how it's gone though you can you can iterate and, and redevelop and, and figure out what's working for you pretty well can't you? that's right and look the community uh, are more interested in you at least giving them some information you're not always going to engage in the largest audience every single time sometimes it's a very small niche audience that find information you provide very valuable to them uh, so sometimes it's just about giving it a try and getting the information out there and if it's not successful and a lot of people don't buy into it, it doesn't mean it wasn't successful, it might just mean that Anisha, a very small group, found it very useful information. Yeah. You've put in some very interesting numbers. Uh, some of the things that you've done have really taken off and become a part of the everyday uh, activity for a lot of people. What, what do you think is the one that really you're proudest of and, and what really represents the mission of the Bureau? Yeah, that's a tough question. I think, look, the, certainly the, the photos that we put up there in the photo competition we run every week for our timeline to have your photo presented on our timeline is extremely, extremely popular. And you know, we're looking at, um, on case by case, we run 250 photos coming in every single week that we're going to try and put into Facebook. And that becomes a bit challenging, but um, it's, it's, it's highly interesting. It gives an opportunity for the community to feel that their information is being spread to our audience. And that's what, that's what we like about it as well, is the fact that it's not just us pushing something out, but we're taking information or something that's part of our followers' lives, something that's important to them, a great photo they happen to take in a moment that meant something to them, and we're pushing it out and we're promoting it to all our followers. And they love it too. 
And I think that's probably something that's been highly successful, the fact that we've taken something that's bought and pushed it, pushed it back out to the audience. And they may not have had the opportunity to do that. Like they might only have a couple of hundred friends, but we're pushing it out to 450, nearly 500,000 people. In some cases, some of them get over 800,000 views, so they're very popular. Certainly something that affects everybody's lives and uh, you know, there's a commonality of purpose, I suppose, in, in getting that information out there, sharing. Everybody talks about the weather. Yeah, uh, that's right. Everyone loves the weather. We, well, we like to think everybody loves the weather. <laughs> Depends on the state you live in, really. Not everybody likes the weather they get, but they're happy with the idea that we present you know, valuable information and timely warnings of what's happening around the country. It certainly keeps everyone talking, no matter what the weather actually ends up being. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. It was said that uh, NASA really came into its own on the internet when it realised that um, every, all of its viewers and potential customers wanted to be astronauts. And when it realised that, fundamentally, it was able to shape the experience in a way that uh, that allowed them to offer things that are of interest, videos, updates, and really relate to the people that were visiting the site and, and using the social media. Um, does the success of your site and your, your social ventures uh, confirm that everyone wants to be a meteorologist? Yeah, I don't think everybody wants to be a forecaster or a, a climatologist inside the Bureau of Meteorology. I think what they're really keen on is sharing their moments um, which relate to the weather, moments that they've been involved in. Uh, I think, if anything, we've probably got a lot more photographers out there, or people who want to be photographers, than we do people who want to be meteorologists inside the Bureau of Meteorology. But um, like I think at the end of the day, it, it's we provide the platform for them and regardless of where or who they want to work for in the future, it's just great to be part of that community. Certainly the community has its own uh, dynamics as well. You, you're bringing people in, you're getting them to talk about something. Uh, these discussions can often turn into quite a lot of other things, I would imagine. How much of an issue has that been in terms of managing that community and making sure that everybody's sort of playing nicely and, and saying nice things and keeping the discussion on, on track? Yeah, I think that's uh, it's probably one of our biggest challenges, in fact, is that um, on, a, on, on occasion, depending on what we're posting, there are items that um, people want to have a, an opinion about. Sometimes they get um, very, very committed to their comments and sometimes they go a bit over the top. So when it comes to moderating, it, it's not a nine to five job Monday to Friday. It, it, it is, in our case, it's a 24 seven requirement to keep an eye on what's going on in there. And that, that's a challenge in itself. Um, you, you know, you don't find that there's a big appetite to have staff on 24-7 monitoring a Facebook inside any organisation. But the facts of the matter are, if you want to you look after what it is that you're offering in that space, you really do have to keep an eye on it. And that's why we use tools like uh, Fetch Rover that monitor our, um, our page 24-7. We get alerts all the time if the traffic volumes in or spike. And if anything, if there's a breach of um, the policy, or there is a use of staff member's name, we get informed of it and very quickly someone will jump on the page and, and take a look at what's going on. So part of it's all about having the right tools and having people available to um, deal with um, situations as they occur. So you've got to keep the staffing going, certainly. Um, what role does this site and the social media work that you're doing uh, play in allowing you to improve your com communications and your partnerships with other organizations, uh, for example, emergency services, who obviously are very dependent on, on weather information? Uh, you know, has this social media investment allowed you to engage with them in new ways? Yeah, look, I guess there's two parts to that. Well, one of the things we're, we're trialing is the use of social media monitoring to utilize information to better inform our front line. Uh, so we've trialled that and we're going to look to see how we could potentially use that in the, into the future. Uh, the, the second part is we do a lot of work with other government agencies. Uh, you know, uh, Cancer Council is a great example of one that um, during SunSmart campaigns we, we push information up onto um, our Facebook to promote that aspect of it. Uh, even areas like ski seasons and some of the ski resorts, we work with some of those through the ski season to promote what's going on um, up at the ski resorts or what the weather's like as well and the services that we offer that um, that are valuable to people who are going to use those facilities. So I think it's um, it's always been about um, working within government and working outside of government and, and finding information that's valuable to your users or your followers on Facebook um, in general and ensuring that you add the information, that your aspect of your information into it as well to um, create some value for it. So uh, Lifesavers is another great example. We work with them and we promote some of their um, campaigns. And in Victoria here, we do work with the CFA and we promote some of the campaigns they're running as well throughout the year. So 
You can't just rely on doing it all by yourself. In fact, if you did, you'd end up with a big stockpile of content you're going to have to have ready. That's a challenge. What we prefer to do is, where we can, we'll take information from other agencies and we'll look to um, utilise our platform to, to promote it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Richard. Appreciate no, thanks. It. Appreciate your time.